Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, Unapologetic Gang. Today we're going to be talking about spiritual warfare, heavy spiritual warfare, and how to win. So um, we've talked about this before, but let's just get right to it. Warfare happens in the spiritual realm. It's not something that you can necessarily see. It's a situation that feels like everything is going wrong in your life. Sometimes it could be witchcraft. Um, other times it's just the feeling of going around in circles, having many ideas and plans, or maybe you are even going through maybe six months of something strange like uh, being really angry or something happening to you. Things are happening beyond you. This is used, <clears throat> there used to be many times in my own personal life where it felt like when things would go wrong, I would just put my hands up and be like, well, I mean, I guess it's just my life, right? <laughs> like, And I'll often just be laughing and like adding more friends to my roster that felt who came off as this unlucky, right? So it's dangerous at times because it feels like all there is to do is just to kind of accept the situation. Sometimes though, we don't have to accept this. Warfare happens in our dreams. Sometimes it can happen when you wake up. Now, recently before I was delivered, I used to feel the feeling of somebody sitting on my chest and I wouldn't be able to speak. I remember this feeling since I was like really young, maybe I was almost 15, 16 years old. Now, the Bible says that the fight of our lives is not against this person, but it's against a spirit called principalities. So warfare happens when you feel like you're being picked on. A lot of good things are happening to and for everyone else but you. So what are some of the tricks of the enemy? Now, why do we have to talk about this, Ren? Well, like when you know what this person is doing, you can find ways to combat it. Again, today we're talking about why it's so important to win, how to win. Hopefully the glare on my glasses is not too much. This hay fever, as a side note, is just like, this is not my favorite season uh, here where I am right now. So please just hang on, bear with me. Bear with me. Excuse me. So, somehow mixing things up, um, attacking things that you do, coming at you through frustration, um, coming at you through another person, you know, maybe good things may be happening and then all of a sudden, oh, did you hear what so-and-so said? So it, it can come through another person. It can come through an attack in your dreams. Um, so just like seeing violent things happen inside of your dreams. Now, again, dreams are a lot more, um, they have a lot more things to reveal than you feel like, than you think way more than you think. So it's really important to write down your dreams, not just daydream, but to write down or record your dreams so you can have some sort of um, notebook or something so you can have some sort of category so you can have a roster of all of the dreams that you've received when you remember them. Now I know a lot of people I've shared before, listen, I don't remember my dreams. I mean, sometimes I wake up and sometimes I remember them and sometimes not. So when you remember your strongest dreams, write those down. Sometimes things happen so quickly in the morning, we're distracted by our cell phones. Like really, the morning comes and then uh, you have to check what time it is and then there's an alert that pops up and then your YouTube pops up and says, hey, there's um, this person you know published a video or they're live right now and you get distracted without saying, oh my goodness, what happened, even if it was very strong dreams. So remembering this is going to help you understand some of the tricks and tactics that people are doing. I don't want to say people that these spirits are doing to harm. It may not necessarily come from a specific person, but in honesty, this is what witchcraft is, right? So witchcraft is using spirits, um, invoking spirits to achieve a certain outcome. So if this is malicious intent, 
it's invoking spirits to harm somebody's social life. It's invoking spirits to make somebody's skin ugly. It's invoking spirits to give somebody bad luck. It's invoking spirits to cause pain in somebody else's life. So the next question is what or area we can discuss is what can you do to win? So I recommend taking communion. This is so important. You know, I wasn't really sure too much about communion. It's just like, yeah, okay, wafers and uh, grape juice is great. But actually, when this, it, it can be a temporary fix. Remember, this is something you always have to keep doing. It's like maintenance. It's not like, okay, hey, I just showered today and uh, I'm good. I don't know about you, but depending on where I am, I like to shower at least once a day. I mean, at the very minimum. So if I'm coming from a situation where I'm at the beach, I'm gonna have to shower a lot. This is gonna be the same thing for um, some of the next steps. Remember that it's a daily thing. It's not that you do this one time and it's over. So taking communion, putting the blood of Jesus and the bread inside of your body is going to ward off whatever some of these attacks are so you can stay sane. The next is I recommend going online and as you are asleep, play, pray, blah, excuse me, play the Bible as you sleep. And there's all kinds of um, really nice videos and you can just use a Bible app. Um, Bible.is is one. Um, there is the NLT New Living Translation. You can go on YouTube. There's something called Soakstream. So you can listen to like waterfalls or healing messages or whatever you need to. So whatever is trying to come at you when you create an atmosphere of God, there's nothing that can really come towards you, right? So you can also win this battle by waking up every day and the middle of the night. Now, what's important about this? Like I was actually having a conversation with uh, a new friend about this. We were on our way out of town to go look at some tours and she was saying, you know, something happened and I woke up like around 3 30, 4 a.m. And I turned to her and said, look, girl, you have to be serious about this. If you're waking up anytime between 3 and 5, like involuntarily, something wakes you up, you don't set an alarm, but these things happen. You need to, this is your soul telling you to do something. So making sure that you have your um, your prayers listed at these hours, right? Three to five, anytime between 12 and three. And you don't wanna just do this when things are good. Please, please, please don't just up and say, oh, well, things are great. I'm just gonna sleep tonight. Like that is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. Do it when things are awful. Um, yes, we're talking about spiritual warfare, but this is also like, um, this is a way of life. This is why we're not religious, we're spiritual. There is a there is a spirit of religion that needs that is purged out of a lot of people. So this spirit of religion is ousted out of many. This is not something you want uh, to have. Doing something, you know, this this spirit of religion which keeps the a spirit out. Um, so you want to make sure that you have these prayers every night. This is one of the most like highly important things I recommend to you. So just pray all the time when things are going smoothly and when they jack the F up. <laughs> like, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I said the F, the heck up, you know, the freak up. Like you really want to be careful about that because um, when things are good means that like you're really out of touch when things aren't going so, so well. So you want to make sure that you also have... Um, uh, YouTube prayers when you rest. So I know like that's kind of like playing the Bible when you sleep, um, but all hours of the day, definitely praying without ceasing. I mean, all day from when you say your prayers from 12 to 3 and you take your nap and then you wake up from 3 to 5 or whatever you have to do, then wake back up again. And then just when you wake up, just like give thanks to God and then cancel your day. In your prayers, what you're doing to win, uh, I recommend at least praying for at least an hour. And if you can pray in tongues, I recommend praying in tongues. Praying in tongues is something that no one else can understand. That's only a language, but 
God understands. Sometimes you start saying it and speaking in tongues for for an extended period of time really can make can make a huge difference and it creates a deep sense of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So there's people who can discern what you're saying. They have the gift of interpreting tongues. But sometimes even when you're speaking, like I will, I will just sometimes lay in bed and I will literally talk to God the way I'm talking to you guys. And so it's really important, right? Like when going through all kinds of changes, positive, negative, sideways, upways, transitory, uh, permanence, you know, all kinds of things, daily walks with God when you're traveling, when you're um, everything that you need to do can incorporate God. So this is one of the best things. And the next thing you can do is try to um, do not even try, just turn away from all of the things that might be what we call an open door. So if you're in this extreme battle and some people can genuinely see it, what do I mean by this? There are some people who are on the street and you see them talking to themselves. They're literally, you see, dang, they're really going through a battle. Or you see your friend is like looking all kinds of busted and you're like, I really don't understand what's wrong with her or him. And you can tell that this person is in a fight for their life. Like, it, you can just tell this, they're wrestling with the spirit. So... When you're wrestling with spirits, they only, in, even if somebody's doing whatever they wanted to, to try to harm you, they can't without you giving them some sort of ground to do it in. Now, going through and listening, as I recommended in the past, Isaiah Salvador is one of the most amazing um, YouTube channels that I watch. He is a traveling pastor. He just turned 30, but he has been doing this for years. He was an atheist who just one moment had the same fire that uh, Joshua Selman talks about. Now, coming from Nigeria, Joshua Selman is, um, he's very powerful. I mean, I, I definitely can say that my spiritual walk has grown with him. So listening to different uh perspectives on this spiritual walk that we have means that uh, I'm learning more. So open doors can be things like pornography. Somebody can harm you if okay. Somebody who plans to harm you, let's say they want to kill you. So they're going to try or they're going to attempt to do it in ways that it may not just be a up in a car accident. It could be, you know, slowly killing you like uh, Freddie Mercury, who comes to mind when he got HIV uh, or AIDS. Yeah, he had AIDS. So if somebody wanted to harm you, you want to close any form of what they could do. This means you don't want to drink. You want to be exposed to any sort of alcohol, drugs. <clears throat> Anything that literally can kill you. Somebody wants to slowly make you lose your mind, they're going to do things that will harm you. Or they want to, you know, I don't want to think about evil or wickedness, but it's important to know that there is wickedness out there. Because what I found is it does create a huge sense of anxiety, right? You know, just sitting to think of every possible open door. We're not given a roar you know, not giving a rip <laughs> about like, you know, some of the things that some of these people can can do. So it's so important to make sure that those doors are closed. So I caution you that these things that I'm recommending you do are not for lukewarm people, okay, or Christians. You can't have part of your life in a party, smoking, drinking, sleeping around, cursing, listening to too much pop music and watching Hollywood films. Now, I, I just even felt this come out of me, right? I was around <clears throat> people who were 10 years younger than me and just being around them for uh, like nine hours from one trip to the next. It was an F-bomb, 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 F-bomb. And then like, what just happened, you know? And it's really important to me not to necessarily curse. So you're human, so you wanna make sure even like, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm humbling myself and saying, it's not a perfect ride. I'm not perfect either. And um, it's hard, right? But it's important just to be on the tip top, keeping up with as much as 
as we can to um, to make sure we're still taking care of ourselves. So this is the person, this is for the person who's just all in. You know, I just don't curse <laughs> around them any, uh, around myself anymore, but you are a product of your environment. So meeting someone and saying, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And then interacting with them, it can, it can rub off on you. So I want to share with you now, um, my personal experience. Excuse me. And I feel like I need a little water before I get through all of this. <laughs> Okay, so as many of you know or don't know, I went through a really hard spiritual attack. I mean, I'm talking it was hard hitting. And this is one of the worst times of my life. And it happened when I was preparing for my career after college. And I went out looking at schools and then I went to Ghana. And when I got there, all hell broke loose. I mean, the enemy tried to take me out and I spoke out against it and even family grew angry at the fact that I was pointing out and voicing um, what I was going through when they, by calling out the attack, hey, this just happened. Just keep quiet, they said. So I mean, that was genuinely hard. And at the time, several family members quietly chuckled to themselves while watching me go through it. I mean, I experienced a redirection in my path. I ended up leaving law school and struggled to find several jobs. Like I was keeping maybe three, four, two, three jobs at the same time. And um, I was fired from one after the other after the other. And worse situations came out of it. Now, um, some people, I honestly took that as, you know, it's just time to do my own work. Some people are meant to work for others, but I just have a spirit of an entrepreneur. This is not somebody genuinely who just like is hardworking and does so much, is not going to um, do well being quiet and making little leaves, like, you know, just going about with others. That's just not how things go for a person it's genuinely speaking anyone who makes even a slight splash not they're not even talking about like epic epic waves or epic proportions of you know <laughs> like a pipeline of surfing that this person's not going to do well in any corporate situation or any sort of um caged situation where they are governed 24 7 so uh this was the redirection of my path. Now, <laughs> I actually ended up experiencing witchcraft in my workplace and I sued the company. I lost my house, my job, my car, like literally everything. I went to see all of the family members and they organized a plan to visit to see if, you know, it was just kind of, it was a bit odd. like. I don't want to just point out any fingers, but um, it was really paid. Like, I mean, it felt like these things were orchestrated. So the moment that I realized that this was their heart, I began listening to the voice of God, which told me to separate myself from them and all of the people in the house. And realizing that they were my family, and I reminded, I was reminded of my passport. And I actually left the country. I saw them a few times before that but you know how some people do something bad to you and then when they see you they act scared they like look scared of you this was the feeling and it wasn't the feeling it was like actually what happened so um it was kind of confusing at the time but uh i ended up leaving and i bought a one-way ticket to mexico this was like in 2015 and I learned to embrace my own situation and change things for the better. So in a series of other forms of spiritual attacks from unfriendly friends, I actually learned what it was like to be in a room of people who wanted me there. I discovered one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the, I mean, people all the time, this person, this person, too, this person, too. I, I had nothing against them. Like I genuinely think of this person as a sister. So. 
I was just discovering them one after the other after the other. And I always had a relationship with God, but it was no more than a relationship with someone that you end up meeting every now and again. This was almost the utmost disturbance to me, discovering all of the fiery darts of these unfriendly friends that they pointed toward me. I would, I would hear, go pray this prayer. And that whisper was a voice of angels telling me to ask, talk to God. And usually they were alerting me that something had gone awry in my life. And as I grew closer and more intimate with the Holy Spirit, I started needing fasting and prayer often. I mean, I tell you guys, even now, if you think you can go a whole week without fasting, you are seriously joking. (laughs) And going at least once every two months on a very long fast. I'm talking a three-day water fast. If you have to go on a 21-day Daniel fast, if you need to just go on just a juicing fast, if you are just straight dry, 40-day water fast that Jesus did, I recommend doing that, okay? But this is why I recommend this, because of what the enemy meant for evil, God works it out in, in, in for my good. So what ended up as a smear campaign, you know, this is where people start bad-mouthing you, turned into full-blown hatred, but God turned around seriously for my good. By praying, fasting, and listening to the Bible and taking communion, this has genuinely helped me. I'm standing here before you guys with two published books, one in seven languages, one there. I travel the world and sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of learning experiences, but what was once such an incredible hard time was something that allowed for me to build a lot of things. And, you know, all of our problems are made specifically for us. And, you know, I shared this in the 2021 messages for what's upcoming for this next year and, um, for 2021, and it's so interesting as I'm like looking down at my, my clock here, it's already the the twenty third of June. Like I cannot I, I can't I cannot this is a lot. This is just like wow. Um so I shared that that the, the the more advancement that we make, it sounds like Biggie Smalls, right? The more money we have, the more the more problems we come across, the more money we see more problems we have. The higher up we go in elevation, there's a different types of problems associated with the issues that we have in each area. So when you meet a problem and you encounter it, I, I just want to say congratulations because that means you made it to a different level. If there's, um, who was it that shared that? I won't say his name, but new levels, new devils. So there's always going to be something to deal with, but holding on to these keys of warfare, right? Speaking in tongues, praying in the spirit that's speaking in tongues, playing the Bible as you sleep, making sure you're fasting often, making sure that you're taking communion. Um, these are, these are tricks that's going to help you win all of your battles always giving thanks and praise. This is one of the best things and keeping your attitude right. I mean, that is honestly, it's genuinely hard. I can understand that someone may not be in a place where they're saying, oh my gosh, you know, uh, it's so hard to be so happy. Like, look, everything is miserable. I've lost every job I've had. My car is repossessed. You, you know, this person's on um, social security. My, someone's on there, you know, I didn't want to say <laughs> what was coming to me uh, because it's sad, right? But let's say it. So so and so's on their deathbed. This and this has happened, and I've experienced series of negative events happening. It's hard to smile through this. I've lost multiple family members. How are you telling me to keep my attitude right? Um, it's not easy. Like I shared, it's a difficult uphill battle, but it's already won. So by playing some of these and keeping yourself in a positive mentality and knowing who you are, I would play some I am affirmations. I don't want to say I would, sorry. (laughs) I don't like to tell anyone what they should, could, or would do. But I play I am affirmations. I can be in a co-working space, sitting down, writing, typing, and I'm sitting down writing my affirmations because it's important to me. So, you know, I don't give a flip, guys. That's what I'm going to call an F. I don't give a flip what the situation is. You have 
a moment to write down your, uh, you have a, a notepad, you have your cell phone, you have um, all kinds of things that you can use, tools, you have grape juice, you can go to the store for 10 cents, maybe you don't have money, but you have food stamps. You can go and get you some crackers and make sure every single day you just take the blood of Jesus and you're eating the bread every single day. Um, this is nothing to play with, this is a fight for your life, okay? And without knowing the proper tools on how to win, it's going to feel harder. But this will definitely lighten the load. So if you go to what um, one of my favorite um, sayings is, if you go to the end of the book, you've already won. So just hold on to that this year. Um, there, Why at this message at this time? Because the spiritual warfare does not end. And most people are entering into a season of this is not, it may not necessarily be a breakthrough. It may not be acceleration, but it's a promotion. So being promoted into a different level means you're going to face new things you haven't faced before. You know, maybe you have not ever bought a house. Now you just got blessed with one and not one, but three. Now you just, you didn't ever had a business. Now all of a sudden you're starting three franchises, new levels, new situations you have never dealt with before. You need to know how to prepare yourself the right way. Everything is spiritual. How you receive money is spiritual. Um, energy between two souls is spiritual. Not liking someone or when you first meet them, spiritual. Everything is spiritual. So understanding and beginning to master the spiritual life is meaning this is this is mastering every part of your own personal life because this is all interwoven okay gang so my apologies again I did not mean to um, say I don't give a flip rip <laughs> been a lot a lot of young people today and it's it's quite yeah I like to just keep my life diversified but um, take care of yourselves um god bless you and um yeah if you made it to the end let me know how you're doing this season i look forward to hearing from you and we shall talk again i wanted to do this during the day i was actually in one of the most beautiful spaces and i had to take my baby because i got a new gopro and i really wanted to um to do a little bit of recording during that time so I did. I'm looking forward to doing some editing so you guys can check out what life looks like over here. But I had to get I had to get this message out to you guys. So uh, there is no wrong time when it's the right time. All right, guys. Take care. See you next time. And uh, please feel free to hit that notification bell, that subscribe button, and leave me a comment on your own personal journey and what you have found or you think is helping you like oh hey i think that um you know working out is helping me or i've learned that it's helping me in the morning definitely do that if you can um all right i look forward to hearing from you i will talk to you soon until the next video ciao